Hey everyone, FPS Chasley here. Recently I went to the USS Torsk Submarine Museum in Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, it's something I wanted to check out. I grew up in the Baltimore area, so I believe I'd been to the Torsk when I was a small child, but that's, we're talking like 25 years ago, something in that time frame. Now these memories were pro have probably been overwritten by the fact that I visited the USS Pompanito in San Francisco back in 2018, so any memories I have of visiting the Torsk as a child are kind of, uh, wiped out by that but anyway that's why i went make some new fresh memories <laughs> went with my girlfriend and my friend louie who uh, did the design for uh, my t-shirt uh, the uss torsk is a tench class submarine that was commissioned in 1944 and then was later upgraded via the fleet snorkel program after the war and kept in service through the early 60s it is presented as a early Cold War sub, which is definitely cool to see. Okay, so if you've ever wondered on these uh, World War II subs, what's up with the shape of them? I, for the longest time, had wondered the same thing too. Like, what is the, uh, what is actually like the pressure retaining boundary of this sub? Because uh, pressure hulls are always cylindrical or spherical. Uh, sometimes a boat like a skipjack has a weird looking pressure hull, but that's only from this this side profile view. If you go down the pressure hull axially, so like along the length of the sub, looking down the long axis of the sub, it's always a circle, even though it, it kind of increases and decreases in diameter. And that's because a circle is a low stress shape. It's just easier if it's a circle. So as you can see here from my little pan along the hull here, this lower black part is the pressure hull. And up here, this gray part is just there to walk along the deck. That's all it's there for. Just a way for people to walk and not fall off the sub because this thing spends a lot of time on the surface people people spending time topside uh so you can see along the bottom that it does not meet the hull and uh that's to let water flow in and out freely so if you look at an ohio class ballistic missile submarine it also has these slits at the bottom of that of this uh this walkable path but for that it's more to make a hydrodynamic cover for the slbm tubes because they stick out the top of the pressure hull all right, so like the USS Pampanito Museum, uh, the tour starts at the stern of the sub. Uh, and since these are World War II class submarines, they have stern torpedo tubes. So we start in stern torpedo. So we come on down in here and uh, it's a lot roomier in here than it would be. I'm sure all the torpedo racks have been taken out to, to walk around here. But yeah, they got some torpedoes sticking out of tubes so you can get a sense of what it all feels like. You can look down this tube here. Since the Torsk uh, served in the early Cold War, we also get some early Cold War torpedoes. So along the top of the rack here, we have a Mark 37. Okay, so here we have what I originally thought was a Mark 37 torpedo. There is a Mark 37. That's in the bow of the boat. I believe this is a Mark 27 torpedo. And I just looked up a Mark 27 online and has these, these four holes are in the torpedo online. So yeah, I think this is a Mark 27 torpedo. And you can see along the bottom here, it actually does have this rail that the Mark 27 torpedo has. So yeah, this is a Mark 27 torpedo. Yeah, and then here we got, uh, saw this earlier in the video. This is a torpedo halfway being loaded into the tube. Not sure what type of torpedo this is. Okay, so this is whatever torpedo is in the rack over here is this same torpedo being loaded up in this previous picture. So whichever torpedo this one is, uh, someone out there probably knows. <laughs> Going to get some kind of World War II torpedo. The, the rear of the boat, uh, seems to be set up for the Japanese time frame because the Torsk sunk the last Japanese ship to be sunk in World War II. If the uh, unless some new information has come out since the display was written, but yeah, Torsk sunk the last Japanese ship to be sunk in World War II. Now moving up one compartment room, whatever you want to call it. I'm not sure if they are actually separate compartments, but here we have the maneuvering room, so uh, the nerve center for the engines and everything. I did not get a chance to read the enormous display on the table there. I would have more to say about this room if I had, but yeah, it seems to be the place where you're controlling the engines, power of the ship. There was a, uh, if we come over here to this little photo, we've got a little piece of paper here that shows the basic steps for rigging for silent running. This seems like something that would be typed up for a display. It seems too simple for being something that would actually be used for this, but I, I don't know. All right, here we got a cutaway of the Fairbanks Morris diesel engine. Not too familiar with this type of engine. The pistons, there's one one uh, combustion chamber, two pistons that go up and down. Yeah, and then over here you can see this enormous connecting rod and piston. 
Uh, just for reference, like a connecting rod for like a typical car is probably as long as that bearing hole for this one connecting rod for this, this engine. And that's to be expected. This engine's dealing with a lot more power than a typical car. Big, cool engine stuff. Always fun to see. Okay, so starting out here, that is the intake for this diesel engine. There's two sets of diesel engines. There's uh, these two in this room, and then there's two in the room previously that had the cutaway. But yeah, that engine, that that is the air intake for the engine. It's enormous. So these subs would run on the surface, and the, that would be the intake for the engine. It just comes from that, just draws it from the engine room. But so you have the hatches open, so air comes gets drawn in from the outside. And then with the snorkel, I think that those intakes are still where they are here. Uh, but then uh, the snorkel just acts as the open hatch when you're submerged. Very crazy. Never knew that the, the intakes would just run from the engine room. So I guess if the engine room was, was closed off and you tried to start the diesels, you just suck all the air out, huh? <laughs> would not be a pretty sight. All right, coming up here to the head. Got two heads, two showers, and two sinks. Very tiny quarters. Uh, I didn't mention it earlier, but the uh, the Torsk has a crew of 80. Had a crew of 80. A little bit smaller of a crew than in LA, for example, but a much smaller boat overall, so there's more things that need to be done, I suppose. All right, moving forward, we're coming now into enlisted berthing. There was supposed to be a rack right in this middle part here, but they took it out so you can walk around, so very tight quarters. Just to get a sense of like how cramped it is in here. Watching something like... Uh, down periscope for example tends to feel much bigger that was probably a set that they made bigger but yeah very cramped cramped quarters all right moving forward from crew berthing we come into the mess surprised at how small it is i guess maybe not it was about this big on the on the pampanito but i guess you think of like a nuke boat but there's it really isn't too much but too much bigger so yeah tiny little mess i guess why it feels small is because i was on the uss north carolina last fall and of course that's a battleship so that mess is gonna be much bigger that crew is probably oh gosh 20 times 30 times larger than the uh the torch crew here at least but yeah so it looks like each of these benches could probably hold about four people and there's four tables here two benches a table so eight so they could probably feed about 32 people at once or so and then yeah get a little shot of the galley here not too not too small, but I guess when you think about how many people it has to feed, then yeah, it is pretty small. <laughs> At least just compared to what you're used to in a normal daily life, huh? And of course, we got ourselves a little jukebox in here with all the uh, appropriate naval songs here. All right, moving forward from mess, we get into control, but on the way, pass by the radio shack. And wow, look at all this stuff. There is so much equipment in here. Just how much space is dedicated to this given how much space has been dedicated to other things let you know how important this is and there's also like a tag down there for an amateur radio station <laughs> yeah okay now we're moving forward into controls here we got some uh some vents and valves for the ballast tanks awesome to see nice pressure of the uh, water beneath the keel here or depth to keel rather specific gravity of seawater 1.025 just means that one unit of seawater weighs 1.025 as much as fresh water. So 2.5% heavier. Got ourselves the status boards here for a bunch of rigging for dyes, valves, vents. A little further out shot here of the same stuff. So I didn't really like look too closely. There, it, this, this, the museum was actually rather crowded. There, were, there was a very steady flow of people through it. I believe these big wheels are for the bow and stern planes, so I'm not actually sure where the uh, the helmsman would sit, or the uh, the guy working the rudder. So I may have missed that completely. So this is about as clear of a shot as I could get at the attack center. So in these older World War II boats, if you're not familiar, you got control where I'm standing, which is really just maneuvering the ship. And then attack center up here is where the captain would be to actually run torpedo attacks on surface subs that's this is where the periscopes are at and everything and it's a separate little pressure hull above control room there but uh they don't want you to go up in there unfortunately here we got the yeoman's office i had to look up what a yeoman is but basically someone that deals with a bunch of paperwork and everything as is evidenced by the binders and filing cabinets and typewriter and such all those stamps back there <laughs> here i believe we have chief petty officer quarters so a, a, bit, a bit of a step up from the, the general enlisted quarters here. And here we have the captain's stateroom. Definitely the biggest step up on the boat. Get yourself a nice little bunk and rack. 
tight quarters, but much roomier than anything else we've seen so far. So there's that. Down there at the, uh, the foot of the bed, and you can see that the uh, there's a gauge there. The captain has access to his own compass and depth gauge to uh, always keep an eye on what the state of the, the general state of the boat is. And you can also see that being captain means you get your own little wash basin and a, and a desk as well to handle all that paperwork. Here we have the officer's stateroom. This is for the more senior officers like XO and such. Got a little desk, but you still got to share some bunks. And here we have the officer's wardroom. So this is where the officers eat. Get to eat in a separate part of the boat. Get some nice china. And then moving a bit forward some more, we got uh, the junior officer's stateroom. So your ensigns and such. You can definitely see slight step up steps up and you can definitely just looking at the photos probably correctly guess the ranking of who is birthed in which which space all right and finally moving almost completely forward we, we're out of the we're forward of control now we're forward of officers quarters and now we're just about in bow torpedo so now we have the sonar room and i did not realize the sonar room was located this much away from control but yeah there you go learn something new every day uh, there was a, you can probably see it in the lower part of the frame here, but there was a big chunk of plexiglass in the way, so you could not really get that close in there to take a look, unfortunately. I would have really liked to have gotten a look at this, but I took some, managed to take some other photos here, so down here we got the, like, the compass thing, so. Yeah, imagine it's showing which way the boat's pointing. The Torsk is, is parked pretty much due north in Baltimore there, so I'm not sure if that's actually accurate or if that's just where they left it. So I believe that it looks like the inner wheel there is giving your absolute heading and then the outer wheel is giving your relative heading. At least that's, a, that's what I would guess looking at that. Oh, and this other shot here without the uh, flash, you can see in the top here, there's your waterfall display. It used to be on a piece of paper back in the day. <laughs> yeah, I wish I really could have gotten in closer, to, to, closer there to take a nice look at that. Learn some more about all this. I mean, I'm sure I can look it up, but uh would have been cool to see it a bit closer in the museum. Uh, and then uh, we're standing to the left, or rather to the starboard of the sonar shack that's on the port side of the boat. And then looking astern, just looking down the hallway of all the uh, the officers' quarters here, or rather all the berthing. I'll say all the berthing spaces and the wardroom that are forward of control. And a little placard here if you want to stop and take a read for how the Torsk got its name, and uh, a description of its uh, E on the sail for Battle Efficiency Award. And you can also see that this boat was involved with the uh, the Cuban Missile Crisis. So that's cool. They actually do call it just a blockade on the plaque here and not the quarantine that <laughs> it's always known as. This little plaque here is a dedicated memorial to Seaman Joseph Grant Snow, who was uh, died in a tragic accident back in World War II. They, uh, he was lost track of as the boat was going to dive and just uh, no one told him and the boat dived without him knowing. Or without him realizing that it was happening so just man overboard and then just succumb to the environment very sad story here in bow torpedo so yeah up above we got mark 37 mod 2 torpedo and then now below we got the mark 14 torpedo i believe this is the only shot i really got of these torpedoes unfortunately but yeah never realized so much of the of the space in that mark 14 would just be the the air there so that's cool to see it's always just nice to remind yourself how heavy these freaking things are warhead of 643 pounds Overall weight of 3,200 pounds, so one-fifth of the weight to the warhead. And then the whole thing weighs more than my car. <laughs> Crazy. And yeah, the Mark 37. Such an interesting torpedo. I'd like to learn more about the uh, the procurement behind that and why that was picked. Definitely cool to see that in person. Uh, never really knew about this torpedo until I started playing Cold Waters. Uh, because all my knowledge of... American subs is pretty much Mark 48 onwards. <laughs> Even then, I really didn't get a sense for like Skipjack or Permit or Sturgeon. I really had almost no sense of those boats before playing Cold Waters. It was really just like LA forward. Anything that I found while playing in Dangerous Waters and Sub Command. But yeah, so it's cool to see that Mark 37. It's really big in real life. I think it weighs like 1,500 pounds, so seven, 600, 700 kilos. And you're used to it being a, a small torpedo in Cold Waters, so it's... It's interesting to get that contrast of seeing how big it is in real life, but versus still being a small little dinky thing in, in cold waters. All right, we got a nice shot of the four tubes here of bound torpedo. I said the Torsk had 10 tubes, so there's got to be... Okay, it looks like I, I'm looking, and I think there are two tubes beneath these central ones. There are, yeah, okay, there's all six tubes. 
and then the rear has four tubes okay so yeah six tubes in the bow here and then here we got like a little shot of what i believe is the escape trunk here in the bow torpedo and there we go we are done taking a look at the torsk we're up here on the bow and then to round it out a shot of me uh just aft of the of the sail here definitely fun to see if you're in the area be sure to check it out all right guys thank you for watching this is just fun to make as i travel around the country from time to time i want to just document the times when i go to see museum ships and make sure to check out museum ships whenever i can it's fun to see i know not all of you guys can get to them or maybe are in different countries so yeah, it's just fun to see but yeah if you can get on one definitely do it it's uh just really fun to see how it really went down how the how, what the quarters are really like it's one thing to see it on a video but just to actually be in there smell the smells feel the things realize how many uh very hard sharp steel surfaces are around you and how easy it can be to get hurt if uh you're like the slip and fall and stuff like that just cool to get a feel for it so yeah thank you guys for watching see you guys next time have a good one and as always good hunting